Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So I'm really excited because what we're going to cover is my official aim lab playlist that is custom that covers the fundamentals and all the best scenarios to really improve your aim on Apex Legends. If you have not, you should check out the condensed version of this on the official aim lab channel. I have it in the descri description down below. So definitely recommend checking that out. Also, don't forget to leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. The screen is going to lag for two seconds because what I'm going to do, I'm going to hide my hand for two seconds. Now what I'm going to do, go to workshop excuse me, go to custom, then you go to workshop, and then you're going to see the playlist featured. What you want to do is type in Daz on everything, and it takes a second to load, but whenever it does, you'll see the playlist under everything, and you'll see that it has a good amount of likes on it. And you click on it, and then you play that playlist. It's going to be done by, it's going to say official aim lab. I have a lot of them here, because this is whenever I was, we were testing and, you know, messing around with everything. You go to everything again, you see the playlist, it says aim lab official task i apologize for clicking a little bit around too much there went a little mm, trigger happy like for a better word this is daz fundamental playlist now what i'm going to do is i'm going to showcase my hand and i'm going to showcase just kind of the movement on scenarios i the, the, the scenarios and my aim is not going to be great and that's the whole purpose of this is to teach not to flex and not to show off i want to teach there's seven custom scenarios that are designed to help you improve and i want to break down and understand what this does and how it helps you improve if you haven't downloaded the playlist, so you have to download, you know, leave a like on it. All that stuff, leave a like on the video as well. I'm going to timestamp this. This part of the video was the intro that we covered, and we're going to discuss now each and every single one of these. Also, shout out to who is Aqua, and also the whole Aim Lab team for the amazing work on these scenarios. I couldn't be happier with how these scenarios turned out. I think these, this is truly the fundamental list to help you improve your aim on Apex Legends. And I know I didn't cover it for a while. I wanted Aim Lab to get as much exposure as possible, but I figured, hey, me pushing the video, me talking personally about it is going to also draw a lot of eyeballs as well. And I figured this would be a positive for Aim Lab, a positive for me, to, in case some of you guys don't know that there's an official playlist on Aim Lab of, you know, custom scenarios that we built. The first one that you're going to see here is going to be uh, strafing. So it's a, it's a target that goes left and right left, right, left, right, that you want to track. And then when you do that, that's going to be your strafe on Apex Legends. Now, the strafe here is definitely more difficult than the Apex Legends one. And it is done intentionally that way. And the reason why it is done intentionally that way is because I want... Let me turn down that audio so you don't hear it as much. I want you guys to get comfortable with a more difficult target. So when you hop in Apex Legends, you'll find that you're just going to absolutely pop off. That's the overall goal with uh, with tracking in the scenario. The, the plus side is that it does duck. But the thing is, to, to kind of cheese the scenario, the only downside of there I know about it is that you can just kind of aim low. But ideally, you want to push yourself, which is what I do with the scenario. That's why my score isn't as high. I try to go for the strafe initially up top, and then you go for the strafe whenever it goes down below. This this one always throws me off whenever I wake up in the morning, specifically, just because it requires a nice, smooth, fluid movement. And you can see that you, know, you spike up to about 47%, and it's really, really helpful to overall improving your aim. Now, that movement, as you can tell, even just from the ca hand camera of moving my mouse left and right, left and right, is that the movement isn't really as large as you think it is. It's really, really small, and that's really the, what I'm trying to teach in this scenario. Whenever I worked with Aim Lab, is the movement is really, really small to tracking, even on Apex Legends, even the recoil. So that's the goal of this scenario, and whenever you take away, the question everyone's probably going to ask is, how much do you practice? all these scenarios my recommendation is go through this playlist at least once a day at least just once a day that will kind of equate to around like if you have no time at all seven scenarios one minute roughly one to two because the thin gauntlets are a little, a little longer that'll roughly last about 10 minutes of practice if you are intense run through it two times and then if you know specifically what you're working on and you're a really big aim buff in the 30 minutes and then kind of isolate at the end which one scenario you struggle with the most this one here is probably one of the ones I struggle with always the most. Um, it's always nice to go back to it and realize what your tracking should be. And there you go. That's a nice solid track right there. And you just keep that consistent. And then boom, your, your tracking and your aim is always going to be much, you know, it's going to be much better. And it's going to be a lot more solid. Now what you can do is you can continue the playlist, go back and forth next. In this instance, let's go to, go to the next one and explain it. This one is also 
an amazing scenario. The reason why this scenario is so effective and so good is because it practices smoothing out your aim, which is one of the biggest things, especially even if you're trying to land wingman shots from a distance, it's that nice smooth micro movement that you're trying to improve. There's various objects that you're going to track that are super thin. If the walls are white, you can change your target. So if you want to change the target, maybe make it blue or whatever. You can go into your visual settings and change that as well. Cause I know I made my, my guy and I noticed the background that it doesn't necessarily look as clean, but that is okay. You can change your, uh, your enemy target to a different color if you want. So let's make it, let's make him blue. And then he pops a little bit more so you can see it across the red. So you can track it that way if you would like. This really works on the same thing. The, the biggest theme that I pretty much preach in these scenarios is really just making sure that you improve your micro movement. This is, this is micro movement to the extreme, making sure that you're really tracking it, which is what Apex Legends really requires. It's not broad strokes and movement. And there's going to be some that we're going to practice that a little bit, but it's all about keeping refined movement and keeping things smooth. You'll notice how little that you're actually moving your, your hand and how much precision that is actually required. And when you can do this, it'll make that aim. And you'll even notice that I have you know, a little stutter there, which is why I'm working on this. These, this setup that I have, the G303, is still my favorite mouse. I love it very, very much. But I'm still trying to marry the sky pad to it. And it's kind of a bit of a reset. My aim, I would say, is roughly a little bit worse in some areas and a little bit better in other areas, but it's a thing that you can continuously improve upon. I personally need to spend way more time on thin, thin gauntlet, so then my strafes are a lot cleaner. And the reason my weakness is that I'm really pretty solid at flicking, because I, you know, I play a lot of, uh, in the past, a lot of battlefield, and I'm a really good sniper. But my click timing, in terms of clicking speed, is slow. It's a little, it's a little, it could be a little faster. I'm not as stable because I click a little too hard and that's why I preach others that they don't need to click as hard because it causes imbalances in your aim. So if I'm clicking, even that small movement that you're seeing, even if it's really small, I'm clicking, trying to click real hard, so then you can kind of tell, does make a difference when you're trying to hit a really small target. That's the best advice I can provide, especially whenever you aim training. Work on small movements. The more advanced you get, the smaller movement that you need to track. I can't preach that enough on this channel. I can't give enough tips and guidance that's what's going to really help your aim, and especially when you're trying to be precise. And speaking of precise, again, this playlist, very, very difficult. This is not an easy playlist, and it, I intended it to be that way. That was 100% intentional when I made this. This is also an extremely hard playlist. This is probably one of the more realistic ones for Apex Legends, hitting a really small target and tracking it while it's in the air. Um, there's so many ins instances when you're playing Apex Legends when you're trying to track such a small target. When, especially when there's one that to use an octane jump pad whenever you see horizon when she flew up in the air this is in you if you can hit this target i promise you that you can hit anything in apex if you can garner a strong accuracy even i don't know 30 percent range and above it, that's a really tall ass these these are very difficult and so if you struggle there's a lot of beginner exercise you can do with aim lab but i highly recommend even if you're brand new to kind of push yourself with this so then you know what your overall goal is going to be but this is great. So what we covered is the first one with a close strafe, which is your strafes. The next one for creating stability with your aim. And this one for tracking targets that are in the air. That's going to be your best bet there. Now, another big fundamental playlist that you should understand and know is tracking the low ground. So this is also in a strafe on the low ground. The low ground can kind of feel a little wonky and a little weird for some people. And it's good to practice, especially how much I preach that you should always have the high ground on apex legends so whenever the, the further more you or the, the further you look down the more awkward the movement is going to feel compared to just tracking somebody who's right in front of you right you move left and right in front when you look down you notice that that movement starts to feel well the camera just kind of feels a little overwhelming it just feels a little awkward and this scenario is built to kind of target that awkwardness to, to really practice it that's that's the overall goal when you're working on the scenario it's why and again i really spent countless nights working with aim lab on this and trying to come up with a scenario where you're constantly able to push yourself and improve i purposely made these highlighting even my weaknesses these scenarios are things that i struggle with so i put my own personal weaknesses in here but i know if they're my weaknesses that they're other people's weaknesses and i put some scenarios in here as well to kind of build off of that but you always want to have height and when shooting from above it's always going to be a bit of a struggle now, the same thing could be said if you're shooting from low ground, but realistically, if you're shooting from low ground and your hitbox is larger, then you've already made a mistake and you're not going to win that encounter. Unless you just absolutely beam them, which does happen. 
that does happen, but if you're playing against somebody of equal skill level, I don't think it's it's gonna really pan out the way you always want it to. So now, let's segue to the next one. This is the headshot mid-range. Headshot mid-range is to work on those refined movements with the wingman. Those single shots and hitting a really, really small target that just kind of appears in front of you out of nowhere. The whole purpose of this is to kind of flick consistently between between them and you know hit them. It's this is this isn't easy and it's very I guess you could say frustrating whenever you're, you're trying to hit these targets and flick. You guys all know my aim and everything. And it's a this reason I'm not I, I want it to feel more personal this video, which is why I'm not trying to like just ooh let me flex all my aim and everything. It's hard to talk and teach at the same time, but I I am favoring educating and teaching more over than anything. But these targets will appear out of nowhere, and you can just shoot them. And as you can tell, it requires it, it feeds in from thin gauntlet. That smoothness that you're looking for, especially when you're trying to hit the targets, you can constantly flick, but your flicks are always going to be more n unprecise compared to just normal quick little adjustments. And the thing is that that happens with all this is the the mistake of over adjusting and over flicking. And that's something that can get improved dramatically while using this scenario to constantly improve your wingman shots. I need to spend a lot more time on this playlist. Honestly, it's kind of a reminder for myself because I've been while I love the shape of the G303, the biggest advice also that I can give is that when you change your mouse pad in your mouse, you're going to need I almost say like it's it's a month adjustment period. You can't necessarily just try a bunch of hardware and expect it to just kind of sink in within a couple weeks. You will notice that you maybe play a lot better instantly, but it's still you're going to find things that you did better on your previous mouse and your previous hardware overall. And that's kind of in a little bit of a situation I am in. I haven't switched anything. I haven't changed my sense. I haven't changed my mouse. I haven't changed my mouse pad. And I'm trying to just stick with it since, you know, Abby and I had our little one, baby, now I think six weeks. And now kind of letting things just sit in for consistency. That's kind of been the goal. So I guess since he was born, I guess it's been almost a month and a half. So I've been using this setup, which is which is relatively comfortable. And, and I, you know, you start to discover your weaknesses. That's the goal of these scenarios too. discover your weaknesses, figure out what your weakness is and then isolate it. And then we'll wrap up and talk about those in just a hot second. Now, the same thing happens when tracking something really small that is right in front of you when it comes to tracking these these headshots. And there's a big movement and it's to kind of cause you to over flick. Ideally you want to go for the head, but you can also go for the body as well. But I recommend tra t pushing yourself to track headshots here. And whenever you do it, you know, it's it's very, it's not necessarily the easiest thing, especially because they get really scrunched up at the bottom there. But the reason that this is again, that close strafe, but also to kind of encourage you to get some headshots. And it's really, really small. It's, it's more difficult than it should be. And it's intended that way to kind of, I, I push, I have these, each made to push you and the more that they push you well the better that you're going to be and you can find out oh I, I tend to over flick a little bit how can I get even smoother aim so I look literally like an aim bot so it looks like somebody looks on my aim and they're just so impressed and awe about it and again you're gonna do these scenarios you're gonna find initially that you're gonna find a lot of progress and then you're gonna plateau very very quickly rest assured it's going to happen now one of my favorite that we put together here is air tracking Air tracking is going to be able to give you those, and it's it's fast. It's not popcorn for that smoothness. You're looking for something that is going to give you the nice full 360 aim, right? You want something that's going to give you that full 360 aim that you can track and then find out your weaknesses. It's going to highlight, is my sensitivity too slow? Is my sensitivity too fast? Do I have to lift? And realize, okay, here's another thing to realize. It is okay when doing this scenario if you really can't keep up and your sensitivity is too low don't feel like you have to change it and that you're forced upon to go with a faster sensitivity there is a thing where you can achieve better scores with different sensitivities so if we look at this playlist as a whole air tracking benefits from a faster sensitivity thin gauntlet benefits from a slower sensitivity Close strafes will benefit from a sensitivity that is not too slow not too fast popcorn is going to benefit from one that is a lower sensitivity that you can track as well higher sensitivity is going to be more difficult for those precision shots same with headshots the headshot gauntlet so i purposely made each of these scenarios so you don't get to just have one sensitivity that rules them all because then you're gonna find a weakness but i want you guys to find a middle ground of what's going to work for you to help you and of course there's, there's a leaderboard here as well with each and every single one of them i know i didn't really highlight that but that is the, the plus side and how you can continuously improve 
and ask yourself because you know you're gonna have a lot of scenarios where somebody jumps right at you then jump pads away and you have to get so used to your 360 movement especially if somebody's trying to tap strafe away from you and has very sporadic movement and how do you track it and how do you improve and how do you get better well it's by pushing yourself with these scenarios i felt that the aim lab scenarios are good but they're not tailored specifically which is why i'm making this video and highlighting how good of a playlist that this is i know yeah one i made the playlist so of course i'm gonna really love it but I, i'm so confident that you guys are gonna find a lot of improvement here and again it'll don't get discouraged that it's going to kick you in the butt okay please 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 do not get discouraged about that it's it's only natural and I, I you can tell like even as i'm talking i have to be super focused when i'm on this playlist i can't talk and get a decent score while doing this and try it yourself try going to discord having a well-educated conversation about something you're really passionate about and then try practicing on this playlist and i promise you it ain't gonna work now the last tip i can provide to you is that think of it this way when you're an apex legend you're trying to make shot calls and moments to call out in terms of things that you're going to do realize how difficult it is to talk and aim at the same time so apex legends is a game that requires a lot of communication so perhaps have your teammates in a call with you and maybe have them just have a conversation while you aim train or warm up and see how good your score and try literally just try talking you know and it, it, you will notice there is a distinct difference between your score when you're talking versus when you're not and it does make a very big very big difference so i hope you guys found this video insightful helpful you now have a new playlist to go out there and play if you were completely unaware of it a lot of people i think we've had over 30 almost a 35,000, somewhere between that range i haven't checked in a while i knew it was around 30 before but that was a couple months ago and now it's probably well above that range now of people who have used this playlist and have it, it's gotten a lot of positive feedback and it's why i'm making this video i just want to remind you guys and have like my own personal archive of the something that i partner with aim lab that i'm super proud about and it's different than any other aim trainer because they listen and they generally really care about players improving and they wouldn't have invested so much time into me and also who was aqua in terms of making sure that we got this playlist right because this took a lot of time as you saw at the start of this the video how much we made sure that the playlist really took off and all the different iterations trust me there was a lot of them until we, i i kept going in game i was like you know what this matches it but let's make it a little harder because why make it just make it easy why not make something harder so when they hopped in game you guys instantly felt the feeling of you know what and this is easy you know that's actually wasn't half bad at all that's the feeling i was going for i wanted you guys to go hop in game to feel confident rather than aim train and then hop in game and still have the same struggle so if you guys found this video helpful if Maybe the format was great. Let me know. Leave a like, comment in the description, or leave a comment down below. Everything is in the description from the Aim Lab video to all the other resources. Again, you can find this on Steam to download. You go into Aim Lab and download it yourself. Again, we'll cover that at the very end here. You, know, you go to the lobby, you go to custom, go to workshop, you type in Daz under scenarios or everything, and then boom, you have the playlist. These are mine. Let's go to everything. Now let's type in Daz. It's got one there for 1,828. I know I'm blocking because of my hand camera, but unless appreciate all of you guys. Thank you all so much for the support on the channel. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye everybody.